Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Keith Hodges, Chair for the Department of Religious Studies here at Beulah Heights University. Over the last 60 days, we have experienced unprecedented and unparalleled turmoil in our country, partly because of the global pandemic, COVID-19, the coronavirus. And I thought that as a way to continue to encourage the hearts and minds of the faculty, staff, and students of our institution, that I would share with you from my heart a devotion that is representative of the final week of our spring 2020 semester. It's taken right out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, around verse number 50. And after Jesus had done and endured all of the things he had endured, he finally released his spirit. Some translation says he gave up the ghost. And so my devotional thought today is one that is very simple the benefits of finishing well. What are the benefits that we have, we experience, we discover when we finish well? Well, right off the rip, I think that many people would have a problem with my subject because Jesus died on the cross. That's a horrific experience in and of itself. So then the question begs to be asked, how does Jesus finish well? Crucifixion was created by the Persians. It was perfected by the Romans and it was the most horrific way for someone to die in Jesus's day. However, if only you think of the events leading to the cross, you miss the message of finishing well. So that we're on the same page, I'd like to remind you that Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And while being arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was treated pestilentially with hostility. He was treated with contempt and disregard, disrespect. And then he went from courtroom to courtroom. And there he was treated with cruel and unusual unprofessional and detestable actions all aimed at him. And when all else was pointing to his innocence, he was turned over to a mob-like group of people who cried, crucify him. There, stripped of his justice, removed from his integrity, uh, accosted in ways that a man has not been accosted before in history prior to him. And yet Jesus there stripped, now being beaten on his flesh, beaten within inches of his life, bloody, black and blue, bruised, shamed, hurt, disregarded, beard snatched out of his face, that he was blindfolded and punched and said, discern prophet who hit you. He has three-inch thorns crushed on his skull. He is challenged to march up the Via Della Rosa with a 150-pound cross on his back. He was spat upon and derided, and yet Jesus died on the cross and finished well. If we only think about what's happened to him, then we're in trouble. And we're in trouble because Jesus had an assignment, and his assignment showed up in his endurance, endurance. That once we understand our assignment, we can have endurance. And so I wanna leave you with three or four pertinent particulars that I pull and lift from the life of Jesus Christ that I pray will help you finish well. Here's the first thing. No matter what happens to you, never take your eyes off of your assignment. It is your place, where you fix your focus. That is, if you are treated in evil ways, if you are treated with contempt, if you are treated with disregard and disrespect, if you don't have support, if you lose support, if you are abandoned by others, keep your focus on your assignment. It is in keeping your focus on your assignment that you will discover that you find the energy to persevere, to break through and not break down. Here's the second thing. 
Not only should you keep your focus on your assignment, you should keep your faith in your God. It is keeping our faith in our God that helps us look above our current situations, our current circumstances, and move beyond what appears to be a barrier into a place of breakthrough. Remember now, they did not take Jesus's life. He laid his life down. The indication that he laid his life down points to the kind of faith that you have to have in your God, that if you lay your life down, your God will raise you up. And that is the story, friends, of resurrection. We are now about four weeks in the shadow of resurrection, but the story still bades true that Jesus did not stay in the grave. He got up. If you're with me so far, you go through the trauma that he experienced, then the trauma of the cross, but now the triumph of resurrection. Whatever you do, never take your faith out of your God. Finally, if you're going to finish well, keep your focus, keep your faith. But then there's a last thing that I want to suggest to you that Jesus seems to show us. Stand true to your finish. God never gives you an assignment that he will allow you to leave undone. Jesus's words as quoted by the psalmist. And lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Jesus's words. Jesus was clear. Jesus was cogent. Jesus was sincere. When Jesus said, I come to do the will of him who sent me and accomplish his work. The focus then is not on the trial, the tribulation, the situation, the difficulty, the finality of anything that we experience as a human being. The goal is that we spend our time understanding that if God called you to it, he'll give you the grace to get through it and he'll provide for you the kind of motivation you need to keep going. So in conclusion, I wanna to say to all of you, don't ever let anything stop you. Like Jesus, keep it moving. I pray for you now. Lord, in every way, take these words, take these moments, use them to challenge people to finish well. In Jesus' name, amen. I am excited to extend to you an opportunity to continue to invest in Bue Light University. We live in unprecedented times, the global pandemic, COVID-19, the coronavirus, has caused there to be a lot of transition and change in the world. And yet, Beulah Heights University, for 102 years, continues to remain consistent. It is that consistency that I commend to you today in my exhortation and challenge that you might continue to give and support Beulah Heights University. Traditionally, on our university campus, every Thursday, we would meet at 10 a.m. for chapel. And during that time, we would raise an offering for the outreach efforts of this institution. Beulah Heights is not a taking institution, it is a giving institution. And we continue to extend our outreach opportunities around the country and the world. Because over the last 10 weeks or so, we've not been able to meet publicly, we've not been able to solicit and ask for people to sow generously into the missionary efforts, into the outreach efforts of Beulah Heights University. So, I want to give you that opportunity today. I want to invite you to go to Beulah Heights University, donate online. Go to our website and donate online, beulah.edu forward slash donate now. You can also access consistent and regular giving by downloading the Beulah Heights University mobile app. Set your giving to repeat giving so that every week or every month or every other month, whatever the frequency you select, you can provide the stability that we need to continue our outreach efforts here at Beulah Heights University. You make a difference. Beulah Heights University is thankful for you.